It's funny. Dan's been kind of dreading the holidays lately and he couldn't figure out why. And then he realized he was like, it's because usually this time of year, because you worked retail, you are either not home or fucking miserable. <laughs> but now I now I don't work retail. I work at the cat shelter. So it's he's like, it's not going to be like that this year. And I'm like, Ooh. no, I'll be home and also not a miserable bitch. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> So he's like, well, I feel much better about this now. This this is going to be a great, but because we've lived together for three years. Three years, yeah. And this will be the first year that I haven't been working in a fucking mall for Christmas. Yeah, you know, you, you mentioned that because it's that time of year again here on Radio oh, Day. It is. It's time. It's um, violent consumerism time of year. Uh, let's let's get let's full get contact consumerism. Oh yeah, let let's get the intro rolling here. Where are you? Damn it! Intro. Every week you lose the intro. I know. It, well, you every... should keep it in your pocket. It hides from me. You should keep it under your scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> That that that's for you something positive fans out there. All right, here we go. Half the chat's not gonna get that. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it right back here for a little something we like to call What the fuck is wrong with you? And of course. The aftermath of Black Friday here in the United States, and I have to say, much to my my happiness, it's been slowly diminishing over the years yeah. we've been doing this. Did I go Black Friday shopping? Hell no. No, I mean it's it's sort of like it's a badge of honor not to go. Black I've been Friday. obligated to be in malls on Black Friday for the past seven to eight years of my life. Now that I'm not, fuck. A baker's dozen of that. <laughs> no. Well, that Friday I was at the cat shelter. I was being nice to cats. That's not to say, however, stuff di didn't happen. Because around the country it did. For example, Black Friday Someone shot in Missouri. Someone got shot in Missouri. They're alive, thank God. But... Violence broke out in 2007 Black Friday frenzy. At least one person was shot at a Missouri mall. Another shopping center in Alabama shut down. They shut down the mall with the fighting. Many stores opened early for the deep discounts and holiday sales on Thanksgiving. Two out of three of every three Americans reportedly plan to shop over the five-day weekend. I'm not one of those two out of three. That's... That's, they're scary. Um, KMIZ TV reports one person was shot outside a Missouri college mall on Thursday night when the stores opened for Black Friday. The unidentified 19 year old su suffered life threatening injuries in the parking lot. Possible motive has not been identified. And you I know Columbia what... Mall is. Columbia, Missouri? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I normally don't do stories where people get hurt. Fucking hillbillies, man. But Jesus Christ, why are you shooting somebody over a goddamn Black Friday sale? Because we're insane. You can find this is our annual Hunger Games. Which you could find that shit on Amazon, man. Christ sakes, don't shoot nobody. And the brawl that shuts down an Alabama mall, mall in Alabama, shut down early on Thursday. Not they didn't even make it to Friday. No, because everybody opens at 2 p.m. on Thursday now. Alabama, Mall because Alabama. Working a fucking $10 an hour retail job should mean you don't even get to have a fucking turkey dinner. Mall in Alabama shut down early on Thursday after a brawl broke out during the early Black Friday shopping. Uh, Hoover police and firefighters responded to the River Chase Galleria after 11 p.m. Is that the one that Roy Moore was banned from? I don't know. Uh, Thanksgiving after at least uh, what 11 p.m. Thanksgiving, which that's something cops love to do, is have to be out dealing with a goddamn Black Friday riot on Thanksgiving. Yeah. 
Because it's bad enough the cops have to work on Thanksgiving, too. Like, people love to point out when I bitch about retail workers working on Thanksgiving that, like, EMTs and cops work those holidays, too. And that's true. But there's a difference between signing up to be a cop and signing up to work at Best Buy. Like, there's just a difference in expectation. But the cops don't like it any more than we do. They shouldn't have to deal with your sorry ass punching the shit out of each other over a TV that's probably been out of stock since the first 10 minutes anyway. One local Fox They probably reporter, only had five. One local Fox reporter said a shoe was thrown during the melee, hitting a baby in the head. Oh what? What? Who throws a shoe, honestly? Don't throw your shoe. That's my Austin Powers. Who's throwing good. a shoe at a baby? You hit a baby in the head with a shoe. Oh, this this is to get nothing for Christmas. Uh, the Galleria closed 40 minutes before its scheduled closing okay. time of midnight. But the mall reopened Friday morning for Black Friday deals. Be cute at them because people are terrible. You can't hear it, but she does this frustrated little grunting thing when she when you pick her up because she doesn't like it. So she like breathes really loud at you and kind of grunts. <laughs> She makes this little exasperated sound. Now, now, just to add a new wrinkle to what's going on in all this, instead of Black Friday brawls, okay, okay I'm sorry. Now we have <laughs> now we have this Black Friday undercover shit. What now? According to the Daily Mail, some people have attempted to skip the lines at Walmart and Best Buy by wearing employee vests, either obtained from no, past shut employment. The fuck up or through social media users selling them online. Let's, let's, uh, I got these Best Buy joints for $110, walk right in, skip the lines, take whatever you want. I'm selling my Walmart vest for $100. Probably because they don't make enough money at Walmart to buy presents for their family. Uh, this Is this a new thing or is this just, good God. I mean, I haven't heard of this, but we did do a story, it wasn't Black Friday, but we did do a story about a guy in a Walmart vest who like took money out of a register. I mean, it's- I mean, uh... points for creativity, I guess. But here's the thing, if you're paying $100 for a Walmart vest to save $50 on some piece of shit at Walmart, have you really won? <laughs> I, I just, Have you? I just love the fact that now they're trying to do a stealth run of Black Friday. I mean, that's new. And the thing is, seasonal, like, a lot of these stores, they don't fucking know their seasonal employees. When I worked at Old Navy, they were literally hiring people on the spot. Like, if you could legibly fill out the application, they were like, when can you start? No interview process. They don't give a fuck if you have skills. They just want warm bodies. So it's conceivable that there's some fucking asshole that they've never seen before coming into work Black Friday. Let's move on to non-Black Friday shit because this is just... It's, I will say it's less prevalent and I like... I want there to be a year without a Black Friday follies. Is, is that... Can, can that happen, please? Can that, can we? We've exported this? Black Friday to the UK, and I don't even understand why. Because they don't do Thanksgiving on the same day we do. They had Black Friday in Japan this year. Why? They don't even have Thanksgiving. Like, why? <laughs> like, the UK does Black Friday. And I asked one of my friends over there, I'm like, but why? She's like, I don't know. It's like a virus. It is. We're infecting the world. This is the zombie virus. This um, is our very slow spreading zombie apocalypse. What are you doing back there? Well, okay. Our our, our next story on the- I just hear thump, jingle, thump, jingle, jingle, thump. Our next story on our regularly scheduled idiocy. There are sometimes I hear about shit like this and my first thought is, please don't die. Because if you die, then we can't laugh at you on my show. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that just warms my heart. And that is this fellow to a T, because, whoa, mama, God, 
damn. Mad Mike Hughes cancels rocket launch to prove Earth is flat. <laughs> a man who believes Earth is flat was ready to launch himself from a rocket in California on Saturday afternoon to prove it. He's canceled his plans, at least for now. Not having the required federal permits plus mechanical rockets with his motorhome slash rocket launcher really forced self that's, that's weird that a guy who can't accept that the earth is round would have problems with science um, wouldn't be able to grasp the vast technical knowledge it takes to build a fucking functional rocket motorhome slash rocket launcher um let's see where is this guy from? California? Hughes is a 61-year-old limo driver who spent the last few years building a steam a steam-powered rocket out of salvaged parts in his garage. His project cost him $20,000, which included rustoleum to paint it fancy and a motorhome he bought on Craigslist he converted into a ramp. This guy was definitely going to die. He was going to die! I mean, no two ways. He was going to die. I... I A steam-powered rocket. But, How is that going to carry you into the atmosphere? This is a real quote. I swear, the guy who built... Quote, I don't believe in science, said Hughes, whose main sp sponsor for the rocket is Research Flat Earth. I know about aerodynamics and fluid dynamics and how things move through the air, about the certain size of rocket nozzles and thrust, but that's not science, that's just a formula. There's no difference between science and science fiction. <laughs> that literally is science. That, that is... Wow. I mean, I'm not an expert, I studied fucking art, okay? And I and I'm nice. I'm professionally nice to cats, so I'm not. I'm not a fucking rocket scientist, but I'm pretty confident That's... that aerodynamics are a science. Yes, they they kind of are. Um, fluid dynamics. That's quite famously a science. Which 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 rocket uh, it, science is a science. I I just it. He still wants to launch this damn thing. And I... I a steam-powered rocket. He's expected to go, I think, something like uh, 1,800 feet to prove the Earth is flat. I would like to remind everybody out there, especially who, people who live in countries with the metric system, he wanted his rocket to go 1,800 feet Commercial airlines fly at 30,000 feet. And are still within the Earth's atmosphere. So I don't know what he's going to prove. Also, like, was he going to bring, like, a camera? Like, what was going to be the proof? Was he just going to come down and be like, yep, Earth's flat, you guys. You'll just have to trust me. I, I just... Was he going to ask a bird? Steam for an interview. Steam powered rocket. Because of course that's what that seems to be the name of a shitty band by the end of this week. That 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 is of course the classic propulsion method that NASA has used. That's what got us to the moon with steam power. You know. That's going to be the name of a shitty band that all wear top hats and goggles and play Metallica songs on the accordion <laughs> by the end of this week. Steam powered rock. Oh my. Oh. Well, well, here's. Like, that, was a, that was never going to work. Ugh. You were going to die. Yes. If this is just an elaborate suicide, that's one thing. <laughs> he got like, someone. You don't got to Alex Jones that shit up. You can just be like, you know what? I hate life, and I want to go out with a bang. A literal bang. And I just want to fire myself into the sky until I explode. 
Anyway. Please do not knock steam-powered giraffe. That's an actual band. I don't know what that means. That's an actual band. Do they wear top hats and goggles and play accordions? They do wear top hats and goggles. Well, then I'm mocking them, because that's silly. Do you hate them more than Ska? Ooh, that's a tough call. I really fucking hate Ska. (laughs) I hate Ska a lot. Well, let's... Now, our our next story... Ironic accordion, Ska... (laughs) Our our next story here, this one, I I have tried to I, I verify this as best I can because um it was reported in a couple reliable places and there are photographs. So take this one as you will. I, I did my best to, to research this, but I hope this is a real thing. I hope this really happened because it makes me so happy. There's an old joke about hunting that says if if hunt if if you want hunting to be a sport, give the animals guns. Well that's a joke. That sounds horrifying, but fair. Well it does sound more fair. Beware! Brown bear armed with two guns on the loose in Siberian region. <laughs> In communist Russia, bear hunt you. <laughs> <laughs> the brown bear brazenly walked into a remote forest ca- cabin, helped himself to a man's bag plus two guns. Animal turned the tables of a 57 year old hunter when he went to a nearby river to get uh, water deep in the Urkust. Ur- Urkust? Urkust? Too many consonants. Uh, <laughs> On November 16th, he was hunting miles away from the nearest village, decided to stay at a forest cabin, left his belongings in the cabin to get some water. When he returned, he heard some suspicious sounds and spotted a bear. And there's there's some pictures of shit the bear did. There's some scratches, messed up a bucket. And to avoid an encounter with the animal, the, the hunter hurried off in the woods where he hid for several hours. Good. When he returned to the remote cabin, his bag and two guns were missing. Man, the new Liam Neeson movie is a little weird, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, I know he did that one where he fought wolves in Alaska, and he did Take In. I guess they're combining those for the next one. Like, a bear took his kid. Smokey's got so a to kill gun. All bears. Smokey's got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> so, remember, kids, only you can prevent forest fires. And if you don't, I will bust a cat <laughs> in your ass. And what probably happened was I'm just I'm I'm like you know, Smokey's gone gangsta. Smokey's had enough. This is just me speculating here. What probably happened was there was food in that bag of some kind, or it smelled like food. Like and the, the bear, gun? the bear took the bag, and the bag just happened to have guns in it. So now. The bear was expecting, you know, a whole bunch, and he's like, "I can't eat this shit." I don't know. This, this <laughs> is the poor bear trying to bite into a gun. This, this is a jip, man. I, I don't get this. this I can't a fucking rip off. I have been fooled. I have been. This is not cool. The poor this bear. This is the actual Winter Soldier. I I kind of I actually feel sorry for the bear. He put in all that work and all he got was a couple of lousy guns. What's a bear gonna do with a gun? Oh, okay, soot stained. Damage. The, the soot stain said the right to arm bears. <laughs> I know, Peggy. There's no more treat. You want some more treats? Okay. Galileo said, "This is who Betsy DeVos warned us about." No, come up here to get the treats. Yeah. Come, come on, baby. Come get the treats. Jiggly say this, here. this gritty reboot of Winnie the Pooh is getting out of hand. Isn't there... There's a t-shirt that says that. Like, oh, bother, said Pooh as he chambered another round. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I, feel, I feel sad for the bear. 
<laughs> I mean, there probably was food too. Well, yeah, but you know, now it's now the bear. Also, is he sure it was actually a bear and not just a really hairy guy? <laughs> it is Russia. It is Russia. I mean, are we sure it wasn't just like Zach Galifianakis? <laughs> Has anyone accounted for Zach Galifianakis swearing outs? Do we know where he was? He doesn't have a picture of an of a bear with guns, so I'm just asking questions. <laughs> okay, we we we've lost this next story. We we've long established there's a rule when it comes to design, advertising, all of this stuff, and that rule is hire a 13 year old, and the 13 year old yeah. laughs. Don't do don't the do thing. It. Start over. Well, here we go again. And, and that rule now concerns me because my nephew is now 13. <laughs> my nephew things. that I used to live with. And I'm like, but he's such a sweet little moppet. And I'm like, no. He's 13. He knows shit. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that I, I don't know how to feel about that. Catholic school. A statue was erected at a Catholic school. The internet yeah. noticed something unfortunate. And I, yeah. don't, I don't know if you can all see there around the lower section of the it. That's if that's what you think it looks like. Yeah, that's I just don't even know how this happens. St. Martin de Poire. St. <laughs> Martin. Again, every single institution in the world should have a 12 year old kid. Yeah. And if they giggle, it's bad. Don't, you don't even have to ask why. Just scrap it. <laughs> St. Martin de Puer is known for its tireless work tending to the sick and poor in Peru in the 16th century. But a statue of him briefly unveiled at a Catholic school in Adelaide, South Australia, caused his name to be known for a much different reason. Blackfriars, Blackfriars Priory School installed a stone statue of the saint, giving out a loaf of bread to a small child. But some people immediately began to notice the size and location of the bread, sort of look like something a little less charitable. <clears throat> the picture of the statue was shared on a local Instagram channel, Folks Fun at the City, where it quickly went viral. I mean, to be fair, if your penis has no head but does have sear marks, <laughs> you should see a doctor. Well, I just, it's, it's if one... it's just sort of a round blob with sear marks, you should see a doctor because that's not right. I think the trouble is not when you get up close to it. Because when you get up close to it, you go, oh, this is like when oh. you're 20 feet away. Yeah. And you're like, oh. He's just trying to give that little kid a little icon of the baby Jesus, except it's a pretzel dog. <laughs> From last week. So here's here's what happened. They had to put, they, they blocked it off. They put like, a fucking... they, they put like a shame shield around it. <laughs> and I have to point out, there is no actual penis on this no. statue. It, but... It's a loaf of bread. It's an unfortunately placed loaf of bread that a child is begging for at waist level. So because of a loaf... But it's a loaf of bread. They put up a shame curtain because the bread could potentially look like a penis so no one... Look at the bread, which is definitely not a penis, and that's not why we're ashamed, and yet the shame curtain is up. Avoid this is this is why people make fun of Catholics because <laughs> we can be a little reactionary. A little bit. Little tiny We don't bit. we don't always think our shit through and then we can be a little reactionary about it. <laughs> Oh. And I mean, shame is our bread. Shame is our bread and wine in the Catholic Church. Like shame is what we do. You know, they say the Jewish do guilt. We do shame. Yeah, yeah. Like that was how my mom dealt with us in public when we were kids. Like if we were acting up in public, my mom would just look at us and go, "Everyone here is looking at you and wondering why that little girl can't behave." That was why I went with Protestantism. We just drink, and that shit was really <laughs> effective. Because when you're like six years old and you think everybody in a place hates you, you're going to start acting right. Catholic shame ain't nothing to fuck with. Oh, boy. All right. 
next story. This is out of Illinois. And one of the, normally when you're trying to perpetrate insurance fraud, you, you, you leave yourself a few steps removed, even, even almost casually. Like, like the, the most common one is someone stole my car. I'd like to claim the insurance money on it when actually you had someone else steal your car and make it look like it was, you know. Or like my husband fell down the stairs. <laughs> which will never happen. God damn right, I'm not walking down the stairs in front of you ever again. But you know one of the things you shouldn't do if you're trying to, to uh accomplish insur uh, insurance fraud via arson? Buy a flamethrower on the internet. That's one of those things you probably shouldn't do. An Illinois woman was busted this week after cops say she torched her Infinity SUV with a flamethrower she purchased online. Julie Gagney, uh, 47, of Barrington, was charged with arson, disorderly conduct, and filing a false police report. She reported her 2016 Infinity QX70 stolen November 10th after the fire. She was at a restaurant. She called police to say her car was missing when she came out of the restaurant. Firefighters found the vehicle ablaze at the end of a dead-end street in Barrington near a precious metal refinery. Gagney later retracted the report that her Infinity was stolen. The paper reported that Gagney turned herself into the police Tuesday. Police have determined a motive. Why didn't she just tell them she was trying to kill a spider? An investigation determined Gagney bought the flamethrower, an X-15, from X Matter in Ohio online. The flamethrower in question uses a mix of three gallons of fuel and napalm to throw flames as far as 50 feet. The device goes for about $1,600. $1,600. I'm concerned that you can buy a flamethrower online. <laughs> Why can you just buy a flamethrower online? Well, here's here's the next I mean, part. I'm sure this psycho knows how to just build one out of shit we have in the garage. <laughs> but why can you just buy one online? Here's you the... do, don't you? Yeah, he does. <laughs> The flamethrower cost $1,600, right? Right, maybe you wouldn't have needed the insurance fraud. Oh yeah, there's no reason to pay $1,600 for a flamethrower. And even more, if you're just trying to torch a car, you know what you can do? A bottle of cheap vodka is what, 15 a bucks? You get a hammer, you break the window, you throw in the vodka, you throw in a match, boom! You, the super savings. <laughs> I like someone in the chat said, that's not bad for a good flamethrower. That's so, who is out there going, oh, well, no, that, that, that's, that's a good price for no, a flamethrower. No, that's actually a good market price. Where yeah, that, well, can you tell me what that website is? No! Because <laughs> you shouldn't be able to buy a flamethrower online. Why? Of, of all the, I mean, for fuck's Fans sake. already got one, probably. <laughs> I wouldn't be entirely surprised. I mean, in various pieces. And not only that, you know how you get the implements to destroy your vehicle? You hand someone else like 40 bucks and say, go to the liquor store, buy me something that'll burn, keep the extra, you're welcome. There you, you certainly go. don't like use your credit card to buy oh. a thing that is only used for setting shit on fire. Right! Don't go, because. There is a paper trail. I mean, but really, what was her plan? She was going to claim that, like, the Russian army came through and set her car on fire? <laughs> like, it was that bear! <laughs> it was that fucking bear! bear. Oh, my God! It was that fucking bear! <laughs> we actually had a bear steal a car once on the show, too. We did. We did? I just... You didn't. This is not a good plan. Your plan is very. But flamethrowers are good for killing bee swarms. No, no. We've covered this so many times. Yes. No, don't, don't do that. Don't. Mike did just send me a link for uh, a nice handheld flame. God damn it, Mike. <laughs> I like having a house. 
No, I mean, is coming and I have cats. I don't know. There was a video Ooh. going around this week about the, uh, um, an exterminator handling a hive, a huge hive. It was like filling an outdoor shed of, of hornets. He didn't get stung once. And you know what he didn't use? Fire. That makes them angry. And it makes other things on fire. What if it was a spider nest? That's easy. I would fill a hose with bleach. That works. They they die. I have shot a wasp straight out of the sky with a bottle of Clorox cleanup. I've done it. I'm a fucking sniper with a bottle of Clorox cleanup. And it doesn't set my house on fire. It just cleans my bathroom. Our last story of this week. Mm -hmm. I think this one this one is from the department of the balls on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. The balls on this motherfucker. Thief steals fire department SUV from the scene of a house fire. Oh, come on. Fort Worth. A thief stole an SUV belonging to the Fort Worth Fire Department at the scene of a house fire in Fort Worth early Thursday and then crashed it into gas pumps at a nearby 7-Eleven. When firefighters were extinguishing the blaze in Northeast Fort Worth, a thief jumped into the battalion chief's SUV and drove off. Shortly afterward, he crashed into gas pumps at a 7-Eleven under construction. He was arrested just south of there. What are the, he, at the scene of the fire, here's what the dude did. He, he was out there screaming his wife was inside the house. Turns out he didn't live in the house and there were, nobody was inside. The owner was not around. So he pretty much went, was at the scene of a fire. He was like, you guys, my wife is in there. Go get her. And they're all like, holy shit. And while they're all running into this house with nobody inside, which is very dangerous for firefighters to have to yeah. go into a burning building. They, if they fucking die. Right. They don't, if they don't need to go into a burning building, they don't go into the burning building. Right. While they're risking their burning, while they're risking their goddamn lives for an imaginary person, your dumbass not only steals the fucking chief's SUV, you crash it into a fucking Seven Eleven, and oh, the mugshot. Let's look at this. The fucking. mugshot's pretty special. It is. Fun fact: just because a vehicle belongs to the fire department doesn't mean it's fireproof. No, that's that's. So not if how you that knock works. over a fucking gas tank, it'll totally go up. Look at this fucking numpty. Jesus. Numpty is a good word. It's a great word. I just what the what was your goddamn plan? What was the goal? I like that's not an inconspicuous vehicle. My uncle drove one of those for years because he was the he was the fire commissioner for like 20 years. They're not fucking inconspicuous. Everybody in town knows the guy who drives that car. And it's not you, dude. Right. Like, it says fire department on every surface. And they of course, almost certainly have it low jacked. Bonus. Because it's good to know where the fire chief is. For the bonus round, he was drunk. So you're driving a stolen police SUV or a firefighter SUV into a rack of gas pumps while you're drunk. This guy sucks. What the fuck is just... Uh, uh. Why? Like, thank God none of those firefighters died. This guy should also thank God because pretty sure you can spin that into involuntary manslaughter. Tiny Donut just said... Wow, my New York just came out. Tiny Donut just said, this is the worst game of bingo. We've got drunk. We've got stolen fire <laughs> SUV. Get roll of gas. I mean, if only he'd gotten naked. 
It's 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 almost like Mad Libs at this point, isn't it? Yeah. Bear. Guns. Walker. Guns. Flamethrower. Naked. Yeah. That's that's what we do. I guess the first thing we learned. Did you hear that? Yeah. Something out there just went thump. Uh it's a kitty. Little house tigers are up to something. Harrietta says, naked is a free spot. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's, it's the middle of the bingo, yeah. yeah. Um, that one's too... So I guess I guess the first thing we learned this week is just when you think you've hit rock bottom, boy, can you keep digging. Yeah. God damn. Those firefighters have every right to kick your ass. Yeah, they do. We've learned. But they won't. Because firefighters usually aren't giant assholes because they're people that run into a fire voluntarily. We learned if you're trying to commit insurance fraud on a $20,000 car, maybe don't buy a $1,600 implement of destruction online with a credit card. Yeah. Keep your overhead low. <laughs> Yeah, I mean you're eating the profits, lady. You haven't even and you haven't even gotten paid yet. We've Did learned set that on fire? there was a box and Peggy just decided to push her sister onto it and oh. it fell off of the camera. We've learned that uh if you're designing things, run it by a 12 year old because they will spot Always. They, they will spot the dick before you do. And they yep. will laugh a lot. Um, we've learned somewhere in, in Siberia, there's a bear with a couple automatic rifles. Yeah. And this time it's personal. I would see the fuck out of that action movie. I don't know about you. We've learned that in America, if you really want to, you can get people to crowdfund your elaborate suicide attempt. Yeah. Now, that's a note about the guy with the steam powered rocket. He tried to raise something like $300,000 to build that rocket. And he got $315. Not $315,000, $315 and zero cents, which he already which, had. Which only proves that there is some small sense of justice in the world. And finally tonight, we've learned... They, they, there's there's now a stealth run of Black Friday. It's it's <laughs> like it's like Skyrim where you put on the uniform of the soldiers. You can walk in. You're fine. And the stupidest part is the doorbuster deals. They never have enough for everybody. Well, no, that's by design. Most of the time, the deals get better as you get closer to Christmas. And now you could just do it online. Like, there's no reason to be like this anymore. There just isn't. There's no justification for it, except that it's like a shared psychosis. Stay home. Eat leftover sandwiches. And watch the parade again, even though it sucks every year. Like... And maybe if if you're going out to try to collect great deals, maybe don't spend a hundred dollars on your disguise. You want to, yeah. Win. That's keep the overhead low. Overhead low, yeah. Keep your crime overhead low. Yeah. Why are we helping them again? 